Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Shane. How you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing excellent. Most most excellent. I'm doing phenomenal, bro. Yeah, it's, Good. it's great to have you on, man. Um, Thanks. Yeah, yeah I, I feel I'll... like I met you like two years ago, right? When I started at Fleet Feet. Yeah, you've been an inspiration the whole time. It's my pleasure, Shane. Right on, right on. You're an inspiration to me. All right, let's get this started. Uh, good morning and welcome to Positive Vibes, uh, making making positivity and gratitude louder in a podcast world. And my name is Shane Nicolich, of course. And my guest today is my good friend, Sam Bosworth. He's an ultra marathon runner. And he also works at Fleet Feet, uh, Fleet Feet Sports or whatever. They're in Bonnie Lake, Washington. And, you know, so I go in there and see him uh, every now and again, or like the other day, I was running around the store getting <laughs> mileage in and, he happened to be taking out. You know, I was taking out the trash. Yeah, yeah, taking out the trash, and so I'm out there. So we connected, and I'm like, "Hey, man, I'd love to have you on my podcast." And so here we are. And uh, yeah, first off, good morning, Sam, and uh, you know it's a pleasure to have you on my show today. Pleasure to be here, Shane. Thank you so much. I wanted to be down there today, but we have a little. Um potential COVID scare in the house. I live in a house, kind of a full house situation with my sister's family and our divorced parents. And yeah. uh, while I was at work yesterday, mom and sister came down with some symptoms. So um, just kind of doing the interview over the phone today, like a lot of things are happening these days. Better safe yeah. than sorry. Yeah, definitely better safe than sorry, especially, you know, some of the things I've, you know, stuff I've heard about the virus and everything. It's better to be cautious than, you know, no. You know, I, I feel like I'll be fine if I get it. But that being said, I don't want to get it. And and my dad, I, my dad has some health problems. My dad has an adult onset muscular dystrophy, which really attacks his. It, it hit around age 50 for him. And then it attacks his lungs and his swallowing muscles and any type of lung infection, pneumonia. It could, could be fatal. But, you know, two or three times the risk of that being fatal. He'll be 69 on the first of the year. So we're all trying to be really careful and cognizant of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, uh, I definitely, you know, got to watch out for people that are aging. And um, yeah, especially, you know, having muscular dystrophy, you never know. But it's, you mm -hmm. know, also, also, I've been told the same thing. I better, I go, I've been told that I better watch out with my multiple sclerosis, being as it's an autoimmune disease, you know, potential that my immune. That's why I was so concerned about getting you the information last night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. You know, it's and like I was saying last night, you know, better safe than sorry. Better, you know, just in case not to pass it on, and potentially, you know, pass it on even further to more people. Um, and I feel like we've all kind of learned this new Zoom skill. I'd never done a Zoom meeting in my life until last March, and I feel like we're all kind of old pros now. You know? Yeah, and yeah. Lemons definitely. and lemonade. Yeah, De definitely. I well, fortunately, I was in that. Uh, was in a mastermind last year and into this year a bit and we did weekly zoom calls on there so i got real used to it there and then okay. being here at this being here at the radio station it's like i've gotten used to them uh even more because i've had to get my own account and get logged in and all that and it's you okay. know it's like line up my own my own zoom calls so it's like yeah it, it takes a while to get everything down but which I'm still, which I'm still doing, you know, but because there's a lot of ins and outs, but yeah, it's, it's sure, sure. just a one, it's a wonderful tool. Definitely. Uh, you know, connecting us just, you know, a couple towns over and, you know, yeah. like on the mastermind I was in connecting people worldwide. And, yeah. You have uh, a great voice. You're doing a great job, man. Keep oh, it up. Right on, right on. Thank you. Um, but yeah, the reason I brought you on the show today was just, uh, you know, I I think it's just amazing some of the mileages you run. I mean, you and our friend Jess just ran, what was that, 240.3 miles? Yes, yeah, so, so it was a race. It was called the Moab 240. 
And we call it a foot race because certainly none of the competitors are running the whole 240 miles. That's what I like about ultra running and trail running. You really get to blur that line between running, walking, and moving across the earth on your feet. So we moved across the earth 240 miles on our feet in about, I think it was about 105 hours through, through the desert and some of the mountains of Moab. And yeah, it was really cool, exciting to be able to do a race this year. Um, our friend Jess, who you mentioned, um, she signed up with Fleet Feet Run Club about a year and a half ago, having very little running experience. She lost a lot of weight, but um, she brought a real positive mental mindset to it, really wanted to do some ultra marathons. And she's brilliant. She went to Caltech. She's got a great mind. And she kind of refocused her mind from parenting and her scientific background into fitness and ultra running. And I was able to teach her some things about running, and she's probably able to teach me some things about endurance and it was a perfect team. Yeah. Right on, right on. Yeah, as, as a matter as a matter of fact, I, I was just she just uh, we were just chatting on uh, uh, yeah Instagram or whatever. We were chatting, uh, and she was saying she was really looking forward to this podcast. And she said, "Two of my yeah. favorite runners, sweet." <laughs> but uh, it's like she's so remarkable. She's a you know she's a good runner, but. When she started ultra running, her mind already had ultra running ability. She just had to like teach her arms and legs how to do it a little bit, which didn't even take very long. Yeah, she's a badass. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I I think you both are. I mean, you know, it's like well, it took me 15 years to get to this point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like normal. It took me 15 years to learn how to run 240 miles. It took her like a year and a half or so. Oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah. True. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, that, that, uh, and I had, I remember I was thinking back and I just, I remember meeting Jess at the start line for the, uh, uh, the run super 50 miles. Yes. Yeah, yes. Up, up there in South Philly, Ellen. Freezing our butts off at like four in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some waiting, rain, like yeah 28 the, degrees. Waiting for the bus or actually we met in North Bend or there at that where the bus picked us up to go up to South Cleveland, but yeah. Um, yeah, that, that was an amazing run. I didn't, I didn't finish the run, but yeah, that was, that was awesome. And I, you know, hope to get up there and finish it one of these times, you know, if and when we I, do it. I say don't never feel bad about DNS. You know, sometimes we look back and we realize that we could have maybe finished something, but I have at least 20 DNFs in my ultra running career. When I look at all, I have DNF a lot of races over the years. And those are probably the ones I learned the most at. The ones where you get a good result, it's like you go do it and the day goes by real fast. You have a hamburger and you go home and that's it. <laughs> but the ones where you True. don't finish are the ones that carve out a spot in the back of your brain and get you to go back to the drawing board a little bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's like, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that I had that experience running, you know, the first half or whatever, because, you know, I, even though I didn't finish the race, finish the run, I still have the experience of what I did do there and tips and tools, you know, suggestions from myself to myself on how I can finish next time. You know, uh, like holding my pace back a little bit so I'm not worrying myself out so much. That's what I like about ultra running. It's like if you look at even marathoning down to like a 5K, you practice doing your distance and you more or less know what you're going to do. And you don't have to eat or drink that much. You go out there. Ultra running, there's just so many different things. You have your pace, your drinking, your eating, your yeah. salt, your coming out of a bad spot, you know, because you can go to a really bad spot halfway through and an hour later you can feel great. It's, it's a remarkable thing about those. So it's, you learn a lot about yourself. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you about was, okay, is there any, I don't know if there's any big difference or not. I, I'm sure you have to train differently, maybe a little bit, but how, like, I know I've trained for, you know, I've trained for up to a marathon technically, and then I've run further than that, but how do you train? Is there any difference in training for 240.3 miles as in training for 26.2 miles? That, that's a good question. It's a really good question. Um, the main difference is getting used to time on, on feet. So as what we did to train for this 240, it kind of goes back to, um, 
a little over a year ago, last November, um, Jess wanted to run a hundred miles. So we did that hundred miles into holiday last November. And we didn't really stop training after that. You're supposed to take a break and all that. We kind of kept training into the new year and Jess got this idea. There was a, an inaugural 200 miler on Orcas Island in May that was supposed to happen. We love Orcas Island. It's a great place to go train in the winter. So we took a couple of trips up there in the winter and did um, a couple of hiking, running weekends where, you know, we covered 50 miles or so over two days. And um, so the Orcas 200 was canceled in May. That being said, you know, Jess, you know, her mindset, that was not acceptable. So we, we went over to Orcas Island in May and over about 51 hours, I think we did about 110 miles with two 90 minute naps in there to kind of, you know, get an event in and feel like we put some of our training to use. And I'm like, cool, that's it for the summer. And I go back to work at Fleet Feet, you know, a couple of weeks after that, I start getting these texts from Jess about wanting to do the Wonderland Trail in three days. So without any really my own planning, the last three days in July, I found myself at the start of the Wonderland Trail with Jess, and the plan was to do that in three days. And that was a lot harder than I thought it would be. And um, after that, she suggested we got on the Moab 240 wait list. And so we had done those 200 plus mile events over a couple of days and we both had a couple of injuries. I've been dealing with a hernia all summer, which I'm going to have to, I'm, I have surgery scheduled December 11th, which I'm kind of excited about. Yeah. So really a, after the Wonderland Trail, we didn't train all that hard. We got out for our daily runs. We went for some hikes. Sometimes when you're just fit, you need to, and you have some little injuries, you just got to let it be and do what you can. So prior to Moab, um, after doing the Wonderland Trail the last three days of July, we did our little five-mile runs in the neighborhood. We did a couple of eight-hour hikes. We hiked up to Mirror Camp, 10,000 feet on Rainier. We did the enchantments. But it was mainly planning logistics after that and, and visualizing. I really believe the longer the race is, the more important visualizing the different points added are going to be. Because yeah. um, go, going into this one, I DNF 400s in a row. Four official, the last four official 100 milers I signed up for, I DNF, which doesn't really bode well going into a 240 miler. So I spent a lot of time in my brain picturing how I was going to feel, picturing the voice in my head telling me to quit, which it did. <laughs> and um, all the answers I was going to give that when, when it came up with reasons I should stop it. The biggest one was halfway through the race, it took us 54 hours and it was a 112 hour time limit. I didn't think we were gonna have enough time to finish the race. But um, yeah, Jess really a big, she screwed our, helped screw our heads on and we had some runnable terrain after that and the second half went better than the first half, which is sometimes a common theme in Alter where you can be dead, down and out, and an hour later you, you feel great and you're on top of the world. Yeah, I can I can definitely relate to that. Uh, when I was well, not that I've done uh, even a hundred miles, but uh, when I was when I did the uh, when I did the pack rim twenty four hour run down in Longview, I uh, there was a couple times during the middle of the night where it's like I was just so worn out and my legs were hurting, my left knee was beat up, so I sat in my car for an hour, turned on.